Okay. Uh, now I have uh, mounted a piece of uh, acetal rod in my lathe, and uh, the first operation was to s just to um, clean up the, the end of the rod, which has already been done. Uh, next thing will be to center drill. And I don't have a tripod for my camera, so this is going to be a bit shaky, I think. And the reason for center drilling this piece was so that I can use uh, a center in the tailstock. Uh, and that is because the acetal rod is going to be uh, turned down to 11.6 millimeters, and I don't want any deflection of the material when I turn it. So, yeah, that is why I use a uh, center. The acetal is rather soft. So, okay. Acetal is a wonderful material to turn. Okay, now the diameter of the acetal piece is, uh, I think it's 11.55 millimeters, and I think that should give a nice sliding fit in a 11.6 millimeter hole. Next step is to cut a groove for the O-ring, uh, that seals the pre-chamber from the, uh, yeah. It makes sure that the high pressurized air doesn't escape from the pre chamber. Uh, okay. Here I'm about to cut the groove for the O ring. Uh, I've just. Uh, yeah, well, the cutting bit is just touching the acetal rod and the dial is zero. Okay. There it is. Uh, there should also be another groove for the second O-ring uh, that seals seals from air leakage uh, at the moment of firing. But since the yeah, well, the gun isn't built yet, so I'm not sure where exactly where the hole for the transfer port is going to be drilled, so I'm, I will cut this second o-ring groove at a later point in time. I don't know if you remember, but I said earlier that I use a 60 degree taper on the sealing surface of the valve. And the reason for that is that a standard center drill produces a 60 degree taper. So it makes it real easy. Okay. There you can see the 60 degree taper that is going to be used as a sealing surface later on. Next step is to bore, uh, bore a hole for the valve stem. And in this case I've decided to go with a 2.3 millimeter diameter valve stem. So in order to make that hole I put another 
clean the tailstock. There it goes. As you can see now, the, the 60 degree tapered area is, is rather wide and that is because the valve body hasn't been bored out yet. It will probably bored out, be bored out to 4.5 or maybe 4.75 millimeters and that will make the surface or the ceiling surface area rather small because if you have a small or um, less surface area on the ceiling surface makes for higher pressure per surface area from the valve and that will give you a better ceiling. I hope you can see this but now the, the valve has been bored out to 4.5 millimeters and thereby creating a rather uh, thin ceiling surface on the 60 degree tapered area. Don't know if this shows in the pictures. Uh, I think the width, the, I think the ceiling surface should be between one, maybe a half and one millimeter wide, somewhere there. As I said before, there should be another O-ring groove on this piece here somewhere. But uh, since I don't know the exact layout of the gun, or the rest of the gun, I'm not going to cut that groove now. I'm going to do it at a later time. Uh, so all that is left to do now is to part this piece off. Parting of Delorn is like, it's like uh, <laughs> I don't know, cutting into hot butter. I really like it. Next up is to cut the valve pin, uh, and I, as you can see, I use my collet chuck for most of the turning jobs. It has a lot, a lot less uh, run out than a three yaw chuck, uh, but of course, everything can be done on a three yaw chuck, as long as you try to do all, all the cutting in just one. Uh, one mounting in the chuck because if you try to uh, turn a valve pin for example and you use your three jaw chuck uh, then you won't be able to unclamp and clamp it back again and, and get it to run through well maybe you can but I can't so that's why I use my collar chuck first I'm going to start by facing off the end and center drilling it center drilling done so everything is set up for cutting the valve pin. Um, it might can be a bit tricky sometimes to turn uh, long, very very slender pieces. So you have to go go slow, take easy cuts. Uh, I've set my compound slide over at 60 degrees so that I can cut the ceiling surface of the valve head in one at once. Okay. Getting closer. So 
So I'm pretty close to the uh, final final dimension of the valve pin. Um, so I'm just going to polish the last piece away there, I think. Uh, now I'm going to cut the 60 degree taper on the valve head here using the compound slide. So I'll just take a light cut here to get a good clean taper. That would do. This is what it looks like after a bit of uh, polishing. Don't forget to cover your bedways when you're, when you're polishing. Almost done, just to part it off and uh, uh, turn down the valve head a bit. Well, the valve pin is almost done. I just have to uh, swap the collet for a small one mount the valve pin the other way around. Yeah, I want to keep it as short as possible from the chuck. And I think I will need to have to support it with a with the live center uh, in order to be able to turn down this piece here without bending it. Okay. That could have been done from the beginning of course. That would have been better, but okay. I'd like to turn down the valve head a bit here, and that is for two reasons. One reason is to lose weight, and the other reason is uh, to be able to fit a small valve return spring. That is pretty much the turning job done. I'm gonna cut this off with my. Uh, I'm actually gonna use my hacksaw for this to go real easy, and then I'll just take light cut to clean it up afterwards and maybe a bit of polish. So here it is. Finished item. Almost finished anyway. Uh, I fitted an o-ring. Uh, like I said before there's going to be another one a bit further back on the valve body but the exact location isn't decided yet. So. Okay. Thanks for watching and uh, yeah as you can as you can hear I'm not that used to speaking English and I'm not an uh, engineer. Thanks.